Hi everyone, Bernard here with the latest Citizen Vlog and we've got, well I don't think we can celebrate it but we've certainly got to talk about it aren't we? This is a moment in time and obviously we can't be overly specific sometimes with these things, players signings and management's appointments and sackings etc because they're never quite specific but we have to go with the dates we're given aren't we and on 21st of May 2001 which is obviously as I'm recording this, uh, this is for today's date um, many many years ago I'm recording this in 2020 so 19 years ago now so that's uh, from this date anyway yeah Joe Joy Roll was confirmed as leaving the club whether that means sacked or kicked out who knows but uh, confirmed as leaving the club obviously please so we're gonna have a little talk about that today in Joe Royal's brief stint not nothing just a 10-15 just a minute little vlog on that uh, might be of interest to you anyway please if you're new to the citizen channel please push the subscribe button push the bell notifications uh, so you know when these little vlogs and specials are coming out there do on these citizen vlogs Please keep your eye out for stuff on Twitter, etc, etc And please push your notifications to to public as well Otherwise if they're set for private, you know, you get these notifications, right? So Joy Royal, yeah, I mean Looking at this, this is a great book that we got obviously back in 2018-19 about the managers And it's got some great stuff, all the city managers in here And it's up to date because obviously we've still got Pep, haven't we, at the time I'm recording this anyway Yeah, I mean, uh, Joe Royal in 1998, just just quoting from the magazine, he took charge of City with just three months of the season to go and hopes were high that Division 2 football could be avoided. But he wasn't to be as the Blues finally ran out of games. Royal and his assistant Willie Donnick had begun to trim them, the unusually large squad and build a new one from the ashes. Joking Cladsey was sold to Ajax for £5.5 million, while the likes of Andy Morris and Ian Bishop and Sean Golds were all recruited for less than half a million pounds combined. Royal family had these the spine around which he could build a side. City initially struggled with life in the third tier before embarking on a super run after Christmas that resulted in a playoff spot. The Blues eventually overcame Gillingham in the final to win promotion at the first attempt. Even better was to follow as the Blues made it back-to-back -back promotions for the first time by finishing runners-up to Charlton in the 1999-2000 Division 1 campaign, again securing promotion on the last day of the season. Royal was a hero, could do little wrong in the supporters' eyes, with the likes of George Weir and Paolo Wanchup signed during the summer of 2000. The Blues faced up to life in the Premier League with renewed confidence, but couldn't bring in the sort of players needed to stay afloat. And nine months later, City had been relegated. So, obviously, I think it was the, the last game, was it on the, um, so this is 21st, 19th of May, was it? Uh, we played the the last game where we got, um, would have been a Chelsea game, wouldn't it? I've got the programme here. Yes. Saturday, May the 19th versus Chelsea. So, yeah, Royal had... Um, had been we've tried to get Royal, hadn't we? Before obviously Frank he replaced Frank Clark in nineteen ninety eight, but we tried to get Royal earlier, but he stayed loyal to to Oldham, didn't he? So which uh, which was quite interesting. And looking back at the King of the Kippax, which I'll come back to in a minute, on the sixth of May uh, two thousand and one, the Sports Mail. So it's a Daily Mail. I mean, we, we sort of take this with a pinch of salt. But Daniel King wrote, "Royal's job will be safe even if City drop down." So this was sixth of May. This is only a couple of weeks before. Um, and he went on to write, Manchester City can still avoid the drop if they win at Ipswich tomorrow night, obviously we know, and they beat Chelsea in their last game of the season, obviously it was all over by the Chelsea game, and Middlesbrough lose their final game at home to West Ham, it's a lot of ifs and buts obviously, but we all know what happened. Chris Bird, the club's chief operating officer, insists manager Joe Rowe's job is safe as the main road regime seeks to put City's turbulent recent past behind them. He has reassured City's loyal fans that relegation would not mark the beginning of another slide into financial and on field embarrassment. Bird said two and a half years ago we set out on a five year mission to become a strong and stable football club. Other than a very disappointing season this year everything has gone to plan. The watchwords have been stability and unity. We have a strong management structure with Joe, Joe Royal and Willie Donachie and the chairman David Bernstein has said he has no desire to change it. When we went down to the second division people said we could have tried another route but Joe has come good. Bird is candid about the financial consequences of falling off the Premiership gravy train, especially it was only one year in, in it, wasn't it? Uh, especially with the new B Sky B ITV television deal coming into effect. Even allowing for the parachute money given for two years to clubs relegated from Premiership, City it would be 10 to 15 million worse off per year in terms of television and sponsorship. 
But Bird remains upbeat. He said what people should not forget is that two and a half years ago this club were in the second division and a very bad financial state with 10 to 11 million pounds worth of debt. These debts are gone. We have a much stronger and more developed squad. The board is strong. We have very sound management and commercial divisions. A new stadium is on the way and we're about to buy a new training facility. We will come out of this season a stronger club one which we hope will continue to improve. So that was the 6th of May. So again, no no real hints at it. I mean, we don't know what's going on. I'll get back onto that in a minute, actually. Um, a little piece in the King of the Kipax. I'll get back onto that in a, in a sec. Um, something quite interesting in there as well. So it brought us, obviously, to our last home game, doesn't it? And, I mean, this is the thing, the Chelsea home game will be back. So, obviously, positive, positive views on there. And, of course... This was a couple of days before Joe Royal left us, so he's obviously writing for the magazine, uh, Joe Royal. And just to quote a couple of things he said in the magazine, it's been a tough fortnight for everyone involved in Manchester City, and believe me, the disappointment of being relegated after only one season back in the Premier League hurts me as badly as any of our fantastic fans. It has been another roller coaster, but I never expect us to go down and knock me side. But it's knocked me sideways. I don't. I have not been much fun to live with for the last two feet, two weeks. I don't think many of us were, and I am sure that goes for everyone connected with the club from the chairman down. But we are not quitters, and we will be back next season, ready to go again, and even more determined than ever to make up for the disappointment appointments of the past nine months. A clear indication that thousands of true Blue City fans feel the same way has been reflected in the season ticket sales for 2001-2002. At the last count, the club had sold more than 16,000 season tickets for what we all hope will be a brief return to the First Division. That figure would be sensational for almost any other club, but the fan base at Main Road in relation to the limited achievements of the last few years is unique and makes it all the harder for us to accept that we are going down. And it does go on to say, uh, sort of what what reason where we go down? He said I blamed a number of factors contributed to us finishing in the dreaded bottom three. All club have injury problems, but some worse than others, and we suffered in that respect. Also, just about everything that hit the woodwork and went in last year came out this time. We had some luck in our two promotion seasons. Uh, we never recovered from the nightmare that six defeats in November and early December and being in the top half of the table not long before that. I think, did we, did we leave the table at one point? Inevitably, we are asked why we don't buy this player or that player. That's not that simple. This isn't fantasy football. You can't buy a Vieira or a Bergkamp or a Zola at the drop of a hat. For a start, they have to be available. Then they have to want to come. Years out of the Premiership will probably cost the club a little bit in terms of prestige. We cannot pay ridiculously high money for potential for someone who might not even be able to go straight into the first team. I could not have asked for more support from the board uh, this season. Never at any stage was there a time when the restriction was out on spending. Obviously, some players were out of reach. And he goes to say, thanks for your tremendous support throughout the season. Let's see if we can take some consolation by going out with a win. Well, obviously, that was probably, probably that was for the... 19th of May so he probably wrote that that's that same week and in the in the magazine as well obviously the guy who obviously would have had the final word on the uh, royal going was obviously David Bernstein a lot of a lot of city fans liked and had a lot of respect for but obviously a lot of it died a little bit after this and his, his comments in the programme. Our return to the Premier League has lasted only one season. Our improved results against Leicester, United and West Ham were not enough. Too little, too late. We could have beaten Ipswich and Chelsea and still have been relegated, which is true. I have previously first referred to our poor home form, so this must be added to our inability to defend the lead. The Ipswich game was a good illustration of this with 75 minutes of effective play neutralised by poor defending. As Arsene Wenger said last Saturday after conceding vital late goals against Valencia and Liverpool, this is not a coincidence. We have to understand what has gone wrong and put in place appropriate measures to deal with the issues. We must have two targets, first to achieve promotion as quickly as possible and secondly, next time to be in better shape to cope with the Premier League. I am assured by the fact that the club is in fundamentally better shape than was the case when we last lost our first division, uh, top division status. The new stadium, new training, our academy success and development of young players, financial stability and a strong organisation all illustrate how our infrastructure has advanced. This is vital to enable us to compete with the best. I only wish we did not have this additional challenge resulting from this season's performance. Next season will not be easy. The past has certainly taught us that. Your incredible support will continue to be vital. We must ensure that every part of the club is ready for the first division. In spite of our disappointment, I wish you all an enjoyable summer. So again, obviously he's not he's not going to hint it, is he? Don't, I don't think Bernstein's going to make a real hint at what's going to happen. Interestingly enough, when we go to the first game of the next season, when Joe Royal has left us, there's a certain other gentleman, which I'll do a moment's, a moment's in time um, 
uh, blog on joined us obviously they used to do a diary a day-to-day -day diary in the city magazine so this is quoting from the first program of the following season so this is obviously from the season back in the first first division so this is from the um, Watford game August 11th 2001 which was the first game of the season and the diary reads Monday the 21st of May the news breaks that Joe Royal is leaving Main Road along with Chief Scout John Hurst, goalkeeping coach Alex Stepney and physio Roy Bailey. As an official statement says, the board would, be, would like to record their thanks to Joe for all his efforts in particularly successive promotions from the second division to the Premier League. Chairman David Bernstein goes on the official website to say, Our review of last year and recent discussions with Joe have revealed fundamental differences of views regarding future direction. I believe to move forward successfully we need progressive strategy both to regain our Premier League status and then compete more successfully than during the season just ended. So that sort of sums it up again. It's the City magazine, isn't it? Got to see anything fantastically different here. But again, back to the King of the Kipax. This is the August 2001 issue. And a gentleman called Mark Patterson, who, who was from the Blackpool and Foul Supporters Club. Obviously, he's, he's a little fallout. Like, this is just one person comments, but I think he sort of shared, you know, a lot of others' feel, feelings as well. And his, his remarks on Joe Royal in this King of the Kipax. I suggested in my last article that I thought we should stick with Joe for at least another season and indulge in a bit of succession planning. Obviously, David Bernstein does not hang on my every word, because a couple of weeks later, Joe was out. Whether you agree with my view or not, plenty did, plenty didn't. Of course, it's all opinions. What is clear is that Joe's departure was a shabby affair. Only a couple of weeks after Mr Bernstein gave assurances that Joe would definitely still be manager next season, he proved that despite his Mr Nice Guy image, obviously talking about Bernstein, he was as ruthless and two-faced as the average football club chairman. Are we really supposed to swallow all this rubbish about disagreements over future direction and Joe's chosen support staff? Bernstein knew Joe was on his bike and judging from his withdrawn behaviour at the Player of the Year season do, Joe knew it as well. So obviously at the player of the season do he was obviously a little bit down Joe Royal there is no way Joe was going to agree to the sacking of John Hurst who obviously he came with him a close friend since they were teenagers together at Everton Bernstein knew this and manipulated Joe's sacking of course we never knew exactly what goes on behind the scenes if the tales of a drinking culture players missing training and players turn up half cut for a premiership match are true something had to be done but the way it was handled was underhand devious and did nothing to enhance the reputation of either the club or the chairman this was no, this was no way to treat the man who in my opinion this is obviously Mark Patterson's opinion, was chiefly responsible for dragging the club off its knees and retrieving a fair degree of the respectability lost over years of shambolic mismanagement. Thanks, Joe. You will always be owed a debt of gratitude by the majority of City fans. Yeah, and that's just a, just to finish off on that from Mr Patterson there in the King of the Kip. Actually, yeah, I mean, as I say, I'd... I'd, I'd I have a lot of liking for Joe Rowley. He left us with some good memories, didn't he? Obviously, you, can, you can't sort of forget the Gillingham uh, thing. You can't forget, obviously, the Blackburn Rovers promotion thing, can you, with Joe Royal? I mean, he, he was a decent guy. Perhaps if he'd come earlier, perhaps if he had left Oldham two or three years earlier, it, things may have been different. Who knows? I mean, his record at City, just to finish off, total record, uh, games 171. This is, again, it's from the manager thing. 174. Drawn 46, lost 51. Goals for 261, goals against 192. So his win percentage, so his wins out of all the games was 43.27% was his win percentage. Trophies, well, just the one, the Division 2 playoff final, if you can call it a trophy. I mean, the runners up in Division 1 don't get a trophy, do they? I don't think so. It's a, it's a bit of a thing, isn't it? His best finish in the Premier League, well, of course, 18th, so... Uh, yeah, that's just a little bit about Joe Roll. I hope you enjoyed that anyway, just uh, little thoughts. And it's interesting, we'll delve into these things, obviously the King of the Kipats and uh, Mr Patterson, what's his name again, Mr Mark Patterson, does go talk about the season and it talks about fans and violence, etc. So we, we, we'll dip in out of these sort of things over time, you know, obviously if you enjoy these citizen vlogs, history vlogs, uh, citizen past I call it rather than present uh, we will touch upon all the so much so much stuff to go at and I hope you enjoyed that little look at uh, the sacking of Joe Royal which happened uh, on the 21st of May 2001 so uh, little moments in time anyway thanks for watching 
Please follow me on Twitter for all the latest movie news and um, city news. Uh, obviously, I do movie and uh, TV drama, vlogs, etc. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, I think most people who like football like movies and TV, don't they? So please follow me on Twitter. I've got two accounts, either at Nostalgia underscore movie or at Charles Deneen. Deneen spelled D-I-N-N-E-N. And I'm on Facebook at Bird Deneen with links to a little movie game, Nostalgia.com, one of my little day jobs, which is just, uh, I used to have a video shop in the 1990s and 2000s. And I would just sell old and rare DVDs over the internet on my website, moviegamenostalgia.com, plus posters from the 90s and 2000s, some great, some great actors, some great films, and uh, sort of retro board games as well. A few board games on there, um, sort of uh, Waddington's MB games, that sort of thing. So if you can spare a couple of minutes to have a look on moviegamenostalgia.com, much appreciated. Thumbs up to you as well, so I'll give you a, a visual thumbs up. Anyway, thanks for joining me today for this uh, look at uh, Joe Royal. Let me know in the comments your memories of Joe Royal. What you think was that? Was Mr. Patterson right? What he was saying that most most fans uh, did like Joe and were a bit upset at the way he was kicked out. So, a royal mission. This is from the Gillingham program, actually the um, the, the playoff final. So obviously another thing uh, we could read out stuff on Joe Royal all night, couldn't we? But uh, I'm sure we'll do a moment in time when he joined City as well. You never know and uh, where he came from and what he was up to. So. Anyway, thanks for joining me for this. What are we going to do the rest of the day? Have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families and let's all look after each other. And hopefully you can join me again for another Citizen Vlog very, very soon. Thanks for watching. Bird is saying goodbye for now. Bye-bye.